To see the difference between the standard prop and the Brunton's autoprop, we're going to start by looking at the forces affecting a propeller. Now the first one of these is torque from the engine, which causes the shaft to rotate. And if we're looking from the end of a blade, that would appear to us as though the blade was therefore moving through the water from our right to our left. Let's change the perspective though and imagine we were somehow attached to the end of that blade. If we were spinning around with it, then it would look like the propeller was stationary and the water was moving in the opposite direction. And that's really helpful to us because it makes it easier to visualise what's going on. What we can now do is take that rotation and make that uh, plane of rotation the axis of a graph. We could make the shaft axis of rotation the other axis. Just move it over to the trailing edge of that blade for convenience. And then we could remove all of the rest of the propeller and the shaft, but just leave one section of a blade so we can see what's happening. Now we represent the water flow across that blade as an arrow coming in from the left, as it was before, along the bottom axis of the graph. The aerofoil shape of the blade is quite complex, but to give us a simple plane of reference, we take a line that joins the center of the leading and trailing edges, and that's called the chord line. Now the angle between the chord line and the plane of rotation is known as the pitch angle. Simplifying the water flow around the propeller, um, water is accelerated aft at by the propeller, so it will appear from our reverse viewpoint as though it comes to the blade and then turns through 90 degrees or so. Water behind the propeller blade, because of viscosity and entrainment, something called the Coanda effect makes water going behind the blade do the same thing. So we end up with an acceleration of water to aft. Action and reaction are equal and opposite, and the reaction to this water movement is known as the total reaction of the propeller blade. And as you can see, it's at an angle. And the greater that angle, the less efficiently the propeller blade is working. Essentially, that angle is representing the ratio between useful thrust, pointing up on our screen, and drag, which is off to the right of our screen. Let's now draw a line on our graph to represent the prop wash, that water moving away from the propeller behind us. And now's a good time to note that it's not all prop wash. Some of it is that induced flow from producing thrust. That's the prop wash. But we've also, on top of that, got relative flow because the boat is moving forwards through the water. So some of it's induced flow, some of it is relative flow from our forward motion. Now we're going to move that total reaction line down to the trailing edge of the blade just to make it easier to compare all the angles. If we look at the angle subtended by the total reaction from the plane of rotation, we can see that it's a great deal bigger than 90 degrees. This is because there are two parts of drag associated with this blade. One is the profile drag of the blade itself being pushed through the water, and the other is drag associated with the coanda effect that accelerated that water around the back of the blade. And then there's plain old friction as the water passes over the surface of the blade. The total reaction can now be broken down into two component parts. The useful one, blade thrust, which is pushing up along the drive shaft and pushing the boat along, and the costly one, which is blade drag, which is making the propeller slow down. Those blades combined create propeller drag, and propeller drag would make the propeller stop unless we matched that drag with an equal and opposite torque from the engine. Unfortunately, things are complicated a little more because a propeller is a series of blades following one another. So the blade in our picture is following a blade just in front. So the combined induced flow from the blade ahead and the relative flow from the boat moving through the water affects the water flowing into the blade that we're looking at. Flow now approaches the propeller blade from ahead of its plane of rotation because of that induced flow. This is the relative flow and it has the effect of reducing the pitch angle, giving you a smaller angle of attack in the water than the pitch angle itself. We're going to simplify the graphic now just to make it easier to work with. In order to restore the total reaction to where it was, we'd have to increase the blade pitch to get the angle of attack to be what the blade pitch was before that relative flow changed. The propeller blade is working on the relative flow, not the plane of rotation. So we need to tip the total reaction back. Look what's happened now. If we compare our original prop, drag and engine torque, we will see that there's a big change. 
So just for a few degrees of relative flow change, we see we've got now less propeller thrust for more propeller drag. So we need more engine torque to get less prop thrust. This is the inherent inefficiency of all propellers. It gets slightly more complicated when we start looking at different angles of attack. This graph on the top left shows the relationship between thrust and drag, the thrust drag ratio. Now with no angle of attack we have very little thrust but very little drag. As angle of attack of a propeller is increased we get a gradual increase in the thrust drag ratio and this increase goes up quite sharply until we get to the optimum angle of attack for the particular blade in question. Eventually this thrust drag ratio levels off and with further increases in angle of attack it decreases and we get more and more drag without getting any more thrust. In other words, our propeller becomes less and less efficient as the angle of attack goes too high. The aim of the propeller and engine manufacturers is to be as efficient as possible. So the engine manufacturer will recommend running the engine at design RPM, which gives it the most efficient operation. They will specify what the drive shaft RPM will be at that speed. And then the propeller manufacturer based on the intended boat speed of the installation, will set the angle of attack so that it's at the optimum point on that curve during the cruise. And that's represented here by the little yellow dot on the thrust drag ratio curve. The problem with this is that any increase or decrease in engine RPM, or propeller RPM to be more exact, or boat speed, will reduce the efficiency of the propeller because it will cause the thrust drag ratio to reduce. For example, if we have a higher vessel speed than that used to set up the prop, this will result because of the increased relative flow in an increased inflow angle and that will reduce angle of attack and make the prop less efficient. Exactly the same thing would occur if we were to, instead of increasing vessel speed, reduce engine RPM. Now, instead of the inflow being greater because of the relative flow, it will be greater because of the reduced rotational flow. Either way, the same thing happens and we lose efficiency. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that if we do the opposite of these things, then we'll get an increase in angle of attack. The problem here is that that will have exactly the same effect. An increase in angle of attack caused by lower vessel speed or a higher engine RPM just results in another decrease in the thrust drag ratio so our propeller becomes less efficient. Now look at going astern. If we reverse the rotation of the shaft, effectively our rotational flow is going to come from the other side. And this starts to look very interesting. Now we have a really inefficient propeller profile. The blade itself is the wrong shape. The leading edge is sharp. The trailing edge is round. The camber is the wrong way. And the effect of this is that the total reaction is really really inefficient but this doesn't really matter because we don't spend long going astern let's now look at the Brunton's autoprop the blades on this prop are attached to the hub using bearings so they're free to swivel and their angle of attack is not built in but it's set hydrodynamically the first force causing this is called centrifugal turning moment now centrifugal force acts out through the hub of the propeller shaft through all parts of the blade, so down the axis at the centre of the propeller blade, but also through the leading edge. Now that leading edge centrifugal force has an axial component and a tangential component, and that tangential component works at the leading edge of the blade. Likewise, the trailing edge of the blade also has centrifugal force, which has an axial component and a tangential component, and that tangential component works in line with the trailing edge. You can see these two forces create a couple and that is what centrifugal turning moment is. It's counteracted by the total reaction of the blade. Total reaction does not work through the axis of the blade, and therefore it creates a turning moment which is opposite to that created by CTM. And when this force is equal and opposite to the couple created by CTM, then the blade will be in that sweet spot at an efficient angle of attack. What this means in reality is that if you have the right prop to give you good thrust drag ratio at cruise speed and at cruise RPM,
then with an increase in speed or a decrease in speed or an increase in RPM or a decrease in RPM, the range of change of angle of attack is much smaller and therefore you have a much smaller reduction in prop efficiency. So if you're motor sailing and the speed increases, rather than the angle of attack reducing, the blade pitch will change to keep the angle of attack correct. You keep your efficiency and you make more progress for your fuel. If the wind then drops and the sails are less efficient and the boat slows down and you don't do anything about it, then the propeller adjusts itself automatically to give you the appropriate angle of attack to get the best efficiency out of your fuel. If you then decide you want to stop the engine and sail, you shut the engine down. Drag now makes the blades move almost in line with the water flow. You do get some drag, but a lot less than you would with a non-feathering prop. And then when you start the engine up again, it automatically recovers its angle of attack. You arrive back at the marina and you want to go astern. When you change the direction of drive, the whole thing flips over, works the other way up in exactly the same way with exactly the same efficiency as going forwards. On paper, it looks like it should work really well. I can't wait to try it out. Do come back and watch our test videos to see how it compares on the boat. I hope you found that useful. Please click like and click subscribe. Thanks for watching.